Hey YouTube, I just wanted to give a short tutorial how to change the um, engine oil and the final gear oil on a 2014 to 2018 Yamaha Super Tenere. This goes for both the ES and the standard models. Um, well you can see here I chose to do the Mobile One uh, 10W40. You're going to need about 3.5 quarts or 3.4 liters, uh, 12 millimeter socket wrench, and uh, a filter of your choice of your company. Um, in this case, I'm using a KNN. It's mo it's this is KNN 204. Um, that's the correct filter. And I don't like to use these because it's a wrench off filter, so you can use the uh, just a normal hex wrench to get it off. Now for the shaft, um, I just want to preface the shaft a little bit um, because I decided to use um, something called Yama Lube. Um, and that is the OEM shaft drive oil. I uh, actually got this at a discounted price because when the guy was getting it off the shelf, he dropped it and cracked it, and it was the only one that had left. Um, but I'll tell you the reason why I chose to go with OEM is because um, I do a lot of work on cars. For example, um, I have a 17 Camaro and a uh, 15 Escalade. And um, a lot of people think that you could just go to the store and buy the correct weight oil. Like, it, let's say it's in this case, it's 80W90, and you could just throw it in your bike and they would have no problem. At least for me, I know on cars, it really it affects your car greatly. So I have a 15 Escalade, and um, it's a truck without limited slip differential. And a lot of these oils and fluids on the shelf, you go to O'Reilly's or Walmart, they have limited slip differential additives. And actually, if you look at you know, forums and YouTube complaints, um, if you put slip, limited slip differential in a truck that doesn't need it, you can cause vibrations and unwanted noise in your differentials. Um, and it goes for the Camaro too. The Camaro is a, a, a sports car version of uh, GM Performance, and so it goes with the Camaros, the CTSVs. If you put limited, like Royal Purple, limited slip differential on those vehicles, it actually causes a big issue in those cars. Um, a lot of people say they take it to the track and then they complain of excessive vibration in their slim and, and their differentials. And it's not really because that uh, there's. It's really more because the additive in it is not in the correct proportion. So if you if you go and read a lot, like. A lot of those guys just go back with that original AC Delco um, transmission fluid because you know it's just the GM had put the correct amount of additives in it to, to fit their transmission. So in this case, um, I did some research on the Yamaha uh, Tenere, and I couldn't find really anything about it being. I don't know if it's a limited slip. I don't really know like how motorcycles work compared to cars. I know cars are very clear and cut. Uh, the service manual does state it clearly. Um, the service manual here, I have it sitting next to me. It really doesn't. It didn't say much about it. It only just said use a an ADW uh, 90, and um, I think it's what uh, GP5. Um, so you know, there's a lot of people out there running Valvoline. I see some people running Amsoil. Uh, I particularly couldn't find um, uh, Valvoline in my local stores that had no additives in it. A lot of them, all actually, all of them had it. Uh, limited slip additive and that's a big no-no I don't want that in there so I just stuck with the original Yama Lube and so you only need 0.2 quarts so you only need a little bit of this stuff um, to fill up that final shaft drive so I have much more excessive like I said I got this at a discount but but be careful when you go to the store and pick this up originally this uh, the technician had grabbed me the wrong one he grabbed me one that had it said Yama Lube shaft drive oil uh, but it said with additive, and you do not want that one. And so he was confused that he was a pretty adamant. It's like, oh no, this is the correct one. And then later on, you know, another guy was like, hey, do you need help? And he was, I guess he was the, the manager. Um, and he was saying that you need to get a certain kind. Um, you, you, you need to get this one for the Tenere. So it's, the model number is ACC SHFTD EX00, the part number. This is the correct one. This one does not have any additives in it, and this is the one formulated specifically for the Super Tenere. Uh, and you want to grab this one and make sure that uh, the technician over there grabs the correct one. You don't want them to make a mistake. You don't want to put the one with additive because this particular bike with this shaft does not need. From what I'm understanding, it does not need any kind of additive in it. So I'm um, just be wary of that. Uh, make sure that you just when they give it to you, double check the right part number. So let's get started. So for the oil change is pretty simple. I don't. I, you know, a lot of people have gone through this tutorial, but basically, you're going to need a 12 millimeter uh, hex socket, and there's two drain bolts right here. And just basically, just let them remove them and let them drain out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that.
Yeah. 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 So while that's draining, I usually like to kind of clean up. You can see my bike is a little bit dirty. So I want to go on, go ahead and go onto the shaft drive. And change up the shaft oil. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of get some of this dirt off. You're gonna need a six millimeter Allen wrench and a 17 millimeter hex socket to do the final drive uh, shaft oil. Uh, I recommend removing the top um, bolt here first. This is the filler bolt. You wanna make sure you can get this off because if you drain uh, the fluid and you can't get the filler bolt off, well, you're screwed. Um, so you wanna always remove the, the top filler first and then go um, with the uh, drain second. Let me. And you always want to check the magnet to see if there's any shavings. Um, see, I bought this bike recently used, and uh, I, the, you know, the dealership tells you, hey, we change everything, we change all the fluids, but I don't really believe them. I never believe the dealers, um, even when it comes to my own vehicles. But you want to drain this and check it, and look at the, this is, this is disgusting. I mean, I, this is bad. So you can see how thick this fluid is and how, how many shavings, like, Look, this is the OEM. I'll show you in a second. This is horrible. I mean, if this GoPro is catching what I'm seeing, then, then you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Let's get close. I don't know if this camera will ca catch it, but... You can see the metal shavings. Watch this. This is thick with metal. I mean, it's just... It's covered. So this shaft drive has, this bike had 5,000 miles when I bought it, and this previous owner, it looks like, did not change this at all. Um, this was long overdue. Uh, to put this in retrospect, I just bought that white Camaro SS over there, and when it had 1,000 miles on it, I you know, immediately changed the automatic transmission fluid, flushed the differentials and everything, and there were shavings in it at 1,000 miles. Um, but that's just me, I'm kind of anal about this kind of stuff. Um, but I would have done this if, this, if I had bought this bike new, I would have done this a long time ago. So you can see this is a lot cleaner now than compared to what it was before. So yeah, shaft drive, you definitely want to, like a car, you want to change this out more often. Two, 200 milliliters, and this, this takes 2.1 liters, um, so the final drive. So it's really easy to fill. You're just going to basically fill up and this uh, fill port until a little bit starts leaking out, and then you put it in. It's, it's almost exactly the procedure, same procedure as a car. Um, and I'll show you how I do it. Uh, you would use one of these tools, and you know, if you change your own car, ATF fluid, you probably have plenty of these suckers. This is what it looks like. All it is is a pump. These are like $2 off Amazon, or um, you can get a metal probably it's pretty cheap too. Let's see if I can adjust this camera down. And what I'm going to do is, and since I have um, previously used this before, you can see there's a little bit of uh, fluid remaining, and we are not going to spend too much time doing this. Um, you can see the previous uh, previous oil. I also used the Dextron six of this sucker because I had to do the transfer case. Um, basically, you're just going to pump, get some of the old stuff out. And you can look at the color of that new fluid versus that old fluid. I mean, wow, that's 
crazy. It's, it's a huge difference. I mean, my goodness. This bike was long overdue, so just pump a little bit out, and um, so you can flush the whatever is left in your previous line, or whatever you previously used. Um, so I have a little bit of left. I think what I'm going to do, uh, and since this is so, it's just so bad. Um, and I have a lot of extra fluid, I'm going to go ahead and close this, just finger tight, and I'm going to fill it up a little bit and then flush, let it drain out again. Because it's just, I mean, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. I'm going to fill it up, and because this container is broken, I'm going to have to find another sealed container for this later, but I'm going to just start pumping. Done weeping out of there. Almost. I might just have to end up using a napkin to sop up all the oil that falls out. But anyway, so uh, the oil filter should be hand tight, and it looks like I can get this one off with just my hands. Oh uh, yeah, it worked. Not too bad. Not too bad. Although it might overfill. Bad at all. All right, clean way to get it out. Uh oh, looks like you know what? No, oh, no, I can just barely get it off. Wow. There we go. Nice. Sick. All right, so now that you're all cleaned up um, and you have everything torqued down, you just want to simply turn the bike on and let it get to. You know, let it warm up for five minutes and then give it some revs and then check if anything's leaking. That's it. And if nothing's leaking, you're good, good to go. So let's turn her on. Too. Basically, you're just seeing if you get any drippage from here, and obviously you're not, because when you rev it, you're putting a pressure, giving a pressure, and it'd be noticeable if you were getting some kind of something, but no, nah, it's all good. Usually, it's not a problem, it's just a precautionary thing. Well, I'm just going to put it in first and watch the shaft, shaft a little bit. Let's drive in a second. But yeah, that's that. Um, you know, oil change and uh, final gear oil change. Not too difficult.